<laughs> we'll start off with a pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> okay, number two, open public forum. Anybody wishing to speak in the public? Otherwise, we'll move on to number three. Approval of the agenda. I need a motion to approve the agenda. Motion. Shannon makes a motion. Second Gary seconds it. Any discussion on the agenda? Otherwise, all those in favor say aye. 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 Against? Motion carries. <coughs> Consent agenda. A. Minutes. July 25th, 2017. Recommendation to approve the minutes of the July 25th, 2017 City Council meeting as presented. B, approve authorizing the city attorney to enter into the stipulation regarding the Cold Spring Brewery's Brewing Company's register of, of title of real estate action in district court. Recommendation to approve the authorization authorizing the city attorney to enter into the stipulation with the Cold Spring Brewing, Brewing Company regarding the company's application to register title of real estate. Letter C, off-site gambling license, Cold Spring Lions. Recommendation to approve form LG230 application to conduct off-site license, off-site gambling for the Cold Spring Lions for a raffle to be held October 29th, 2017 at the St. Boniface Parish Center. Furthermore, to waive the 30-day waiting period for said permit. Letter D, one day gambling license, Nicholas P. Koenig Hero Foundation. Recommendation to approve form LG220 application for exempt permit to conduct one day gambling for Nicholas P. Koenig Hero Foundation for a raffle to be held October 20th, 2017 at the Great Blue Heron. Furthermore, to waive the 30 day waiting period for said permit. Do I hear a motion on the consent agenda? I'll make a motion. Gary makes a motion. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Jamie seconds it. Any discussion on the <coughs> consent agenda? Otherwise, all those in favor say aye. 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 Against? Motion carries. <coughs> Number five, resolution 2017-37, a resolution amending the joint powers agreement Recorey Trail Construction Board. Do you have anything on that? Probably. Yeah, other than, well, just what um, we talked a little bit about last time, the Recorey mm -hmm. Trail Board was looking at changing the definition of quorum and they were discussing some other items. They had talked a lot about um, membership and changing what that meant, but decided to leave it as is. And so um, right now the only thing they changed was changing the definition of a quorum to be three voting members when it was one half of a six member which would be three, and adding one representative of each member city needs to be one of those three Kay. for a quorum. And then the only other changes they did was take out some grant information that had been in the agreement when it was first passed several years ago. And so um, just need an approval of a resolution to make that change, and then it would allow the mayor to sign it, mayor and I to sign it. Okay, I'll read the recommendation. To approve resolution 2017-37, Resolution amending the Joint Powers Agreement with Rockville and Richmond for the Recorey Trail Construction Board. Do I hear a motion up or down? Make a motion. Shannon makes a motion. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Jamie seconds it. Any discussion on this? Otherwise, all those in favor say aye. 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 Against? Motion carries. Number six, North Point Electrical Use Agreement with Jeffrey and Jennifer Ilias. Um, back, well, as I put in the memo to you, in, um, mm -hmm. several years ago, in 2006, when North Point Park was getting um, put together, it was determined it was cheaper to run power to run the irrigation system through the Ilias' house who live right next door than it was to put a meter on there and run um, power individually and at that time in 2006 the city council approved it with a $50 that year with a 3% increase um, 
it never got signed and Jeff never asked for it and then we were talking with him last week and he mentioned something about it and Chris and I investigated and we owe him on that agreement because we had approved it and so I'm just bringing it back to you to reaffirm if that's what you want to do and pay him what he should have been owed since 2006 and then move the, the contract forward from there. And that appears to be about seven hundred and ten dollars. Yeah, for the to catch him up, and then um, his next, I believe it's sixty sixty nine twenty one for his eighteen, and then it'll be a three percent increase every year up to then. Yeah. And, and it would be recorded against the property too. Sixty nine is a year for the year. For the right? year. Okay, should I read the recommendation? Recommendation to reapprove entering. <coughs> into the electrical use agreement with Jeff, Jeffrey and Jennifer Ilias. Do I hear a motion on that? I'll make a motion. Gary makes a motion. Do I hear a second? Second. Shannon second. <coughs> any discussion on this? I just one question. Are there any other agreements like this in town? Is this Not that I know of. It's the only one. Okay. <coughs> any other discussion? Otherwise, all those in favor say aye. 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 Against? That motion carries. Number seven, police department report, Chief Jason Bloom. Mr. Mayor, Council. Jason. Hi, Jason. Um, just gonna go over the sergeant thing first, but Spoden's the call car right now, and he was on the phone out in the lobby, so I'll go over the monthly report. Okay. He'll be in here <laughs> shortly <laughs> after that. He's coming in Is he? <coughs> Okay, we'll do the sergeant thing then. <laughs> Have a seat up there, Jason. Um, so a conditional offer was made on the, I believe it was the June 27th um, meeting for um, officers voting to be promoted to the sergeant spot. Um, he's, we filled all the um, requirements for the conditional offer with the background and psychological evaluation, um, attached the memo, kind of what was agreed upon between me and him. So the recommendation to Recommendation to approve the <coughs> promotion of Jason Spoden to Sergeant effective August 9, 2017 at step two of the Sergeant pay scale until April 2019. Do I hear a motion? I'll make a motion. Gary makes a motion. How about a second? I'll second that. Shannon seconds it. Any discussion on that? You still want the job? Absolutely. <laughs> 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 Any other discussion? <laughs> Otherwise, all those in favor say aye. 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 Against? That motion carries. Congratulations. 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 You have your speech prepared? I don't. <laughs> that was, uh, it's impromptu. You're gonna, you're gonna wing it, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, just to go over some of the monthly reports. Uh, for the month of April, Cold Spring had 439 total incidents, uh, 26 medicals, 13 suspicious vehicles, pre-pull activity, um, 257 traffic stops with 231 warnings and 83 citations. Um, 11 uh, in those traffic stops are 11 uh, narcotics violations and then 143 miscellaneous calls for police uh, related incidents. In April of 17 for Richmond, there was 112 total incidents, three medicals, one suspicious vehicle, 72 traffic stops with 56 warnings and uh, 30 citations, and then 36 miscellaneous calls for police-related incidents. Um, May for Cold Spring, there was 337 total incidents with 21 medicals, 13 suspicious people or activities, um, 151 traffic stops with 170 warnings and 36 citations and 14 narcotics violations in those traffic stops and then 152 miscellaneous calls for police uh, related incidents and then may of this year in richmond there was 88 total incidents four medicals three suspicious vehicles 42 traffic stops with 46 warnings and 12 citations and one narcotic contact and then 39 uh, miscellaneous calls for police related incidents so definitely in our busy time of year um, and we just had national night out on August 1st um, we had in Cold Spring we had pioneer uh, event at Pioneer Park ones up at Towns Edge Mobile Park and then there was actually a community that put their own on up by the golf course so um, each of them 
were really well attended. I was up at the one at Town's Edge. I think we had, I don't know, 70, 75 people there roughly. Something like that. Yeah. So uh, it was a lot of fun. A lot of kids were, were up there playing different games. So uh, overall, I think all of the events turned out really well. So it was a good turnout. And we're always looking for more, more communities to get involved if they want to put their own on. Um, Firefest, kind of a recap with that. It was probably one of our busiest years ever. I think they had, the weather was nice, so they had a really good turnout. Ticket sales went really well. Um, we were busy. We were st stretched pretty thin at times, but overall, I don't think there was anything major that went on. Um, but we were busy dealing with all the different people, so there's a lot of people in the area. Um, the event was busy. There was more camping, and I don't know if that was the cause, but there was less people down in town after the event. So there wasn't a much as much issues down in town between the different bars afterwards, but um, everything everything actually went pretty smoothly, so it went well. It was an odd year. <laughs> it was really busy up there, pretty quiet in town by the time we got down here, and everything worked out pretty smooth in town, so that was nice yeah. as compared to a few other years where we've had people breaking stuff or doing <laughs> God only knows what by the construction and everything else. So. Usually everybody ends up down in town, and it didn't seem that way this year, so things went well. Any questions about Firefest or anything? No. Um, one of the things in the last couple, probably two weeks, was the same weekend as Firefest with the uh, River Lake Days weekend. Uh, River Lake Days. We had a threats complaint. Um, it was an individual saying he was going to collect a debt. Um, officers ended up locating him. Um, after searching him, they found a sawed-off shotgun on him. Um, Luckily, he was compliant when officers did approach him. Um, everything was done safely. He was charged with um, being in possession of a short-barreled shotgun and also possession of a felony amount of narcotics. I think things were handled well that evening. Um, it could have went completely different, but everything, everybody went home safe, so things went well. So, um, And then also we've had a few foot pursuits throughout town. Um, people were arrested for obstructing, false name. Um, disorderly conduct, that, that sort of thing. So it, we're definitely in our busy time of year, but everything's being handled safely as, as far as I can see, so though things are going well. Good. So that's all I have, unless you guys have questions for me. Got anything? No. Nobody? No. Excellent. Keep up the good work. Thank you. <laughs> all right, number eight, Public Works Director Report, John Stevie. And Brian Lynchon. <coughs> Good evening. Hi. So number one item on my list, I have the water tower cleaning. Uh, just kind of give you a little recap of that. Uh, I got three bids to clean the north and south water tower. We don't have to do the ground storage because we just did that, kind of reconstruct on that not too long ago. Um, and they're going to be cleaned by divers, so we don't have to take the tank offline, which because we have different pressure zones around town, so it makes it more convenient for us and and the residents, so they don't have to deal with you know water pressure issues. Uh, the three companies and their bids were as follows: Liquivision, I think they were out of like New Jersey, uh, forty-one hundred seventy-five dollars. Water tower cleaning coat out of Wisconsin of fifty-six hundred, and then Midco Diving and Marine Service for thirty-four ninety-eight out of South Dakota. Um, <coughs> so if you want to read the recommendation. I will read that. Recommendation to approve hiring Midco Diving and Marine Services for cleaning of the north and south water towers at a cost of $3,498. Furthermore, to be paid from the Water Department budget line item 6812. Do I hear a motion on that? I'll make a motion. Jamie makes a motion. Do I hear a second? I'll second it. Gary seconds it. Any discussion on that? One quick question. How often do you, do we clean them? Uh, I think it's every four years, three or four years on the insides. Okay. Any other discussion? Otherwise, all those in favor say aye. 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 Against? Motion carries. Uh, just an update we received yesterday um, for salt for this winter. Ron usually puts his, his amount in uh, to the salt company, how much we kind of want. They called me yesterday, and uh, that quantity is available for us this year, so probably the next council meeting we might, might have that on the agenda for purchase. But Okay. Uh, water update, 
XL's running the power on uh, Greystone Road uh, to the Fraley property, and then from there we'll be burying the service to the irrigator, either burying it or going overhead. But part of the purchase agreement, we are in charge of that. So um, Brian and I and uh, some people at Stantec are working on with the Fraley's irrigator to figure out the amount of power they need for that specific pump. So it's kind of uh, what we're working on now with that. Um, and then an update on Ron, his uh, knee replacement surgery went well yesterday, so. Good. Let everybody know. Good. How long is he out, you know? Up or to three months. Up to three months? Yeah. Okay. He doesn't think it's gonna be that long. But. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he, he probably wish he'd be back to work already, to be honest yeah, with you. He'll be there next week. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> trying, yeah. Uh, that's all I got. <coughs> all right, thanks, John. Thank you. Number nine, engineer, city engineer report, Brian Lynchin. Mr. Mayor and Council, um, start with uh, Main Street. We uh, talked to Kramers today, and they should be starting, they figure tomorrow or the next day, on the section going up by the bridge. I know there's been a little delay there. They were waiting for some equipment, so that should be getting going here <coughs> very shortly. Okay. So they do have until the end of September to complete that, but so they have plenty of time here, but they're starting starting to get to that time where it's. Yeah, I was kind of wondering when they were going to start on this again. Yeah, and, and the, the large gap between the two completion dates was really there to kind of help get better bid prices. If we push them both really tight, then the prices would likely have gone up. So that's why there was that gap. Okay. So. Uh, light poles, I think the Design Electric took, they were supposed to have taken delivery on them yesterday. So I anticipate seeing them sometime soon. Oh, okay. I don't have an exact schedule, but that was the anticipated delivery. I haven't for heard for sure if they got them or not. Um, and then we'll uh, want to talk about the tree near Winter's Hardware, but if there's any other questions about Main Street first, then we can talk about the tree. What do you want to know about the tree? I personally, I we spent seven, what seventy five hundred dollars put that tree in. We we spent. I, I counted it out. We they're about forty five hundred a piece. Forty forty five hundred. Yeah. So the things that go into them, um, there's structural soil. So there's a that's the matrix of rock and topsoil that they they put in a layer of of crushed rock. They wash topsoil in another layer wash topsoil in with water and, and build this up. Build, put the tree within that. What it does is it gives the roots somewhere to grow in an urban environment. So I think there's about 16 yards of rock, almost 17 yards of rock in there. We have about uh, 60 square feet of pavers and then the tree are the components that go into it for a total of 4550. Um, I did provide a um, I didn't know if anyone had a question on the memo that I provided with some of the options that we can um, look at where that tree is. Um, if you want, I can go through them or if there's any specific questions. You guys got anything on them or? I mean, I haven't heard anything else other than the couple of comments that I heard originally and then it kind of has gotten. <coughs> I know there was one, one comment emailed to us that we spent all that money on putting it in can't we at least leave it there i don't know and that's my i guess that's my opinion too that we at least leave it there and see once what hap you know what happens to it if it does if it does outgrow the sp space maybe we take it out but i really if we trim that tree i i really don't personally don't see a problem i don't know so we'll table it for six months then, or 12 months, <coughs> come back to it next year. Yeah, spring. we could do that. And see I mean, we could always see once what we can do. I, I just, I really don't. But I know Doug was one who had some complete, had heard some mm -hmm. complaints about yeah. it too. So I heard myself, I heard one complaint about it. Other than that, I haven't heard anything. I don't know about you guys, if you heard anything. Not since our last meeting, I've not. Yeah. Just before that, when we first talked about mm -hmm. it. I heard one, pers one person said that that just looks like an odd place and it's and it's under the can under the awning and I looked at it. It's, it's really not under the awning. It's on the outside of it. 
Yeah, it's close to the edge. Yeah. yeah. I really think we yeah table it until Straight, for a year yeah. and see once what see once what kind of comments we get out of it and what it looks like in a year or two from now. Yeah, it ain't gonna change anything. I mean, you can take it no. up five years from now or. Whatever. Yeah, we can. We can always. We can, can always, always put, take it out. Yeah, yeah, never yeah. 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 yeah it definitely, Just always an option. We can do whatever we want down the road. Yeah. And I don't know how much how how much it would take to put a bench in there after a while, but you'd have to put footing a footing in there, right? I don't think that you know I'd outline the cost of the bench. Yeah. I really don't think that's going to change because at this point it's it's really a one off anyways. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that that really wouldn't change. No. Okay, let's let's do it that way. I think. Yeah. Let's hold off on the, on that for about a year. And see what's happens. Thanks for putting those options together for us. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Thank, thank you. you. Absolutely. <clears throat> is that it? That's all I have. That's all you have. <laughs> Any other questions? Any questions for Brian mm -hmm. or John? Mm -hmm. No? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Number 10, city, in, city administrator report. Uh, last council meeting, we allocated some money to the Northbrook <coughs> Trail Board out of the bond proceeds from the um, conduit funding we did with the uh, Assumption Nursing Home in February, I believe it was. And back in February, we talked about using all that conduit for the trail board, but we never actually had a resolute, um, a motion to do that. And so, um, as we're getting ready for the budgeting and then obviously auditing, we want to make sure we do everything in the right way so it doesn't look like I just put it there without your approval. So we do need a motion to um, use that conduit funding for uh, wow, what is the parks. word? Parks. Okay, I'll read the recommendation then. Recommendation to approve the allocation of the bond proceeds from the Assumption Nursing Home Revenue Bonds to the Parks Department <coughs> Parkland Dedication Fund. 23-90-91-4621. Do I hear a motion? I'll make a motion. Shannon makes a motion. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Jamie seconds it. Any discussion on that? Otherwise, all those in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> Against? Motion carries. Next was just an FYI. The League of Minnesota does their annual regional meetings in the fall, and the dates are set. Uh, the agenda is not, but it's October 6th in Melrose. And so if, um, I know you're all busy, if it's a Friday, so if you wanted to attend, let me know. Um, also, if more than three of you attend, we will post it as a meeting since you will be there. Although it won't technically be a meeting we do any work at, you will be in present. So um, once I get the agenda, I'll send it out. And when the registration opens, you can all let me know. So you should be getting that shortly mm -hmm. in the next week or two. Uh, see, this is the last meeting before the St. Boniface Parade. La we did put two pl floats in, and so I'm just checking if everyone's still um, able to attend. Will we need both floats, or will we be down to one? Uh, we have both the trucks. We can either have you all sit in the cab and throw it. We've got, we'll get the candy and throw out the candy, or have you uh, sit in one drive and sit in the back. If it's a nice day, you can sit out there and throw candy. So I'll need to know probably by Thursday if we're only doing one or two. So if someone isn't going to be able to attend, you You'll will be there. Be there. Mm -hmm. Shannon, are you going to be there? I'm going to be out. You're going to be gone. Okay. Look, Gary, no, you won't be there? I will. Okay. I mean, you can fit four comfortably in my trucks. So right. So we only need one truck then, so probably. We, yeah. I'll let the me parade people know we'll need Jamie. one. Jamie. I don't know if Doug, I, I thought Doug, Doug said, said he would. Yeah, I'll check with him He's but when he gets back from vacation. Yeah. So but yeah, week. there'd be three people, so that should be plenty. Yeah. Okay, and then finally, at last session, we uh, you approved going forward with the baseball project, and you wanted different funding options. Mm. We have a couple, <coughs> but the one that I think is the most appropriate, um, our gambling fund is the ten percent gambling fund that we earn from the charitable gambling at the various uh, bars and everything. We have a pretty solid fund there and 
we could cover it out of that because this is a maintenance issue, it, so it's a qualified use of that gambling fund money. Otherwise, we do something similar to an undesignated, taking one of our undesignated funds now, pay it this year and repay it through levying next year. I don't really want to levy for an $8,000 mm -hmm. $8, expense when we have a fund that's yeah. available <coughs> to use it. Mm -hmm. So if you're okay with that, just a motion to approve paying for the baseball park funds out of the gambling fund. I'll make a motion. Gary makes a motion on that. Awesome. Shannon seconds it. Any other discussion on it? Otherwise, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Against? That motion <coughs> carries. There it is. That is it? That is it. All right. Number 11, list of bills and additions. Recommendation to approve and accept payment of the accounts payable according to the list and supplemental list presented by city staff. Do I hear a motion to pay the bills? I'll make a motion to pay the bills. Shannon makes a motion to pay the bills. So how about a second? I'll second it. Jamie seconds it. Any discussion on it? Otherwise, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Against? Aye. Motion carries. Number 12, general questions and comments from the city council. Jamie. Nothing for me. Shannon. I don't have anything today. Gary. Nothing. I've got, Jacobs Prairie's got a pork chop feed Saturday night from 4 to 9. Uh, everybody's welcome. I just thought I'd throw that out there. Otherwise, I've got nothing. Now we got to read. Oh, I got to read all of this? Yep. Oh, we got to have a closed meeting, consideration of an offer to purchase properties with parcel identification numbers. 48.29401.0006, and 48.29858.0000, and 48.29854.0001. This meeting will be closed pursuant to Minnesota Statute 13B.05, Subdivision 3C3.